in this video i'm going to be showing you how to design your very own logo using adobe illustrator welcome back to the channel my name is cjam and here we are inside of adobe illustrator and the first thing i want to do to create my logo is just go ahead and click this new file button right then you can choose the size of the canvas that you want to work on usually for me it's 1080 by 1080 that is pretty much acceptable because it's illustrator you can export it to whatever size you want right so let's go ahead and click create and here is our blank canvas this is what we're going to be working in to design our logo now if you want to design along with me you're going to need your own copy of illustrator and to get that all you have to do is click that first link in this video description to download illustrator that way you can design along with me and here's what's cool after we've designed this logo i'm going to also make it free for you to download that way you can go ahead and use it as your own and if you want to use photoshop to design a logo instead of illustrator if you only have access to photoshop that's also fine i have a video where i give you 10 free logos and i show you how to design all 10 of them inside of photoshop so be sure to check out the resource links in this video description for those 10 free logos as well as the full tutorial of how exactly i designed those logos now all that said let's start designing so the idea that i had in mind today for this logo is a shield logo kind of a shield that says learn share obviously my channel's name is learn share photo video so something that says learn share original so we're going to create our shield and then we're going to add our text that says learn share original right the first thing i want to do is hit p for my pen tool because that's what we're going to be using to create our shield and i was going to create half of the shield and then duplicate that but enough talking more designing so first things first our pen tool by hitting p as i mentioned so i'm clicking and holding shift right one two three and then i'm going to do a fourth click that pink line is my smart guide telling me that it's aligned with a top edge. I'm just going to click and hold the shift, but let me just click first and hold the shift and just drag it. That way I get a curve edged like so. Not curve edged, curved edge. Sorry, I can't even talk. Right, then I'm going to release. So you'll see here it's giving me an, another curve, right? but that's not what I want. Remember. I'm going to click escape to delete that continuing point. Then you see I have half of my shield here, right? What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to copy, like I said, control C to copy, control shift and V to paste it in the exact same spot. So I have two of them right here where you're only seeing one. Why? Because I pasted it in the exact same spot, right? Then I'm just going to click on it, come up top here to object, transform and then reflect and just click vertical click ok and then i'm going to move it over and you can see i have two of them right then i'm just going to join them like just clicking and moving it while holding shift that pink line and the word intersect is telling me that it's perfectly intersected right then i'm just going to highlight both of them right click and click join and this will just join all the edges for me so those two halves these two halves will become a whole shield right now it's a little bit warped it's not exactly how i envisioned it so i'm just going to click on it and just pick a corner and just like stretch it a little bit that's good enough for me right and right now it has a white fill that's not necessarily what i want i'm just going to come over here to my properties tab under appearance hit fill and just pick a color or i already have my swatches here i can just pick a color but i want to be specific I want to change the fill that's white. So I'm clicking this fill here and let me just choose this dark color here, right? Is there a stroke? Yes, there is a stroke or an outline and I don't want an outline right now. So let me just hit stroke under my properties tab and just click this red line here that says none and it will eliminate the stroke for me, right? If there was a stroke, let me show you what it would look like. It's a one point stroke, let me do 10 you'll see that's an outline. That's not necessarily what I want, right? No. So let me undo that, Control Z to undo, right? Then I'm just going to duplicate it, duplicate this shield right here by hitting Control C, Control Shift and V, pasting it in the exact same spot. If I were to just hit Control V, 
it will just paste it somewhere randomly, right? All right, so let me undo that control Z. Now we have two of them. So I'm just going to enlarge this one a little bit. I can do it over here under my transform values, under my properties tab. Let me just stick a pin here. If your illustrator doesn't look like mine and you want to get your properties tab over here, first things first, you come up to window and then properties. When you do that, you may get a floating window that looks like this. All you have to do to pin it over the right hand side is just click the word properties and just drag it here. That blue line is telling me that it will get pinned on top of the current tab that says libraries here, right? So let me just release and there you are. That's how you get your properties tab. And whatever element you click on, you'll get the properties for that specific element, right? Let's move on. As I mentioned, I wanted to increase the size. So what I can do is I can just hit the size over here width and height, or I can just manually do it by picking a corner, holding Alt and Shift and just dragging it out. But remember, both shields are the same color. So let me just change the color of this one. You're not seeing the other one because it's smaller and it's behind this one. So what I will do is right click on this one and then go to arrange and then send to back. You'll also see that there's a shortcut there for that, right? If I go back, you'll see it says shift control and left square bracket. If you're on Mac, shift command left square bracket, right? Let me just begin by adding my text. Well, you know what? Actually, I could add a stroke to this one now to give it a little bit of separation. Let me just come back to stroke. Sorry. Let me select white. Then let's make it about like five pixels. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let me change this gray right here to be the same as this inside the dark gray. Let me hit fill. And then, yeah, because we have some kind of separation now, right? Actually, let me undo that. Let me undo that and choose another shade of gray. Uh, what do I like? Let's invert it. Let's make this one the lighter gray. Let's make the outside one the darker gray. What do you guys think? And then let's make the white a little bit thinner. We're getting there. We're getting there. Know that I have my shield, right? I want to write the word learn, share, original, like I mentioned earlier, right? So what I'm going to do is hit T for my type tool or my text tool. Click anywhere on your project, right? L E A R N. Wait, let me make this bigger. Select everything. Let's go like 60 pixels. We're definitely changing the font from Myriad Pro to Gotham. Who doesn't love Gotham, right? Gotham Black. And instead of writing out the word L E A R N, I just want to write L R N, like modern abbreviation, right? Learn, share. You, you still you can still see and uh, interpret what it's saying, right? So learn, share. Let's break the line and write original. Oops. Oh, can't even spell original. But let's abbreviate this one too. So orig original, original, right? And then let's align that to the center up here. Or you can do it over here under your properties tab as well. And then let me just adjust the line height. Uh, what does the line height look like right now? 72 points. That's not too bad. Let me change the color to white. Hit fill. Click white. That's looking good already if you ask me. And then let me just add another word right here or two other words. Let's say learn share original established in 2016 because 2016 is when I created my channel, right? So let's go ahead and duplicate this. Just copy control C, control V, you know, it is what it is. And um, let me just edit my text, right? Established, do I write established or do I just write EST? Let's just write EST, right? With a little dot. Then let's obviously make it smaller and uh, then Let's increase the character spacing to about 300, 400, I don't know, 600. Is that too small? Maybe. Let's go. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. It's coming together nicely. Let me actually, let me actually group these two shields here. Control and G to group them. So wherever I move one, 
they'll both move, right? Control and Z to undo that. Let me align it to the center of my document. Let's do the same for the learn share original. Let's align it to the center, right? Oops, where is the EST? Let's put the EST on top, right? Let's duplicate that. Control C, Control V, and then let's just, oops, let's just change this to 2016 because as I mentioned, that's when I created my channel. Let me just align this to the center. But you see this text that's editable? Editable? Editable, yeah. Um, I want to create, convert it to outlines because it's not giving me like accurate alignment because it's still a font, right? I want to create it, turn it into like a shape. So let me just right click and click create outlines, right? But you see, now I can't edit the text anymore. So what I'm going to do is undo that, Control Z, Command Z if you're on Mac. And then I'm just going to duplicate this font or copy this font to somewhere off of my artboard. So that after I convert this to outlines right here, this original one, if I ever want to come back and change something like, for example, when I give you guys this file to download and make it your own, and you want to edit this text, you can always come back here, right? So let me go, or let's say I want to change this font here to something that says peanut butter and jelly. I can always do that, right? So now I can get accurate alignment. Let me align the horizontal and vertical center C ever so slightly. And then let's align this. Did I already align this? I think I did. Let's do that. Maybe I didn't, right? And then let me just bring down the 2016 like so with the learning share up some more and i just wanted to add some stars you know like five stars or something like that so let me hit my star tool here let me come over here under my rectangle tool or my shape tool right click hit the star tool and just let me just click and hold shift if i don't hold shift the star will just keep spinning like so right and increasing in size randomly but i want to just hold shift so i get an upright star see that then i'm just gonna align this to the center bring it down some more should i put the stars outside or keep them inside what do you guys think yeah let's leave it like that and then i'm going to duplicate it Control c Control shift and v to paste it in the exact same coordinates then i'm just going to move this over oops sorry <laughs> Then I'm just gonna um, move this over to, what did I do to that star? Oh, I curved all the edges, right? Then I am going to redo that, Control Shift and V, and just move it over to this side. Then I'm going to just select all of them like so, and just distribute them evenly so that there's equal space in between them, right? I'm just gonna come up top here, distribute horizontal centers, and then I'm gonna group all of that. But before I do that, let me just copy one more. Let me just paste one more because remember, I already copied this first star, right? So Control Shift and V. Let me just drag this down like so. Wait, there's two here. Let me delete that one. And then let me align this again. Oh wait, I distributed the centers, right? All right, so let me group this now. Control G, align that entire group to the center of my document. Align this lone star to the center of my document. And you can see we are getting somewhere, right? Should I make the stars smaller? Should I? What do you guys think? Then I can just select all of these and just like distribute the, the vertical centers. Before with the stars, it was horizontal centers. No, it's vertical centers, right? Let me just distribute them. That's equal-ish, I believe. <laughs> But let me just hit the stars individually. Just knock it down a little bit. I'm just holding shift and using my up arrow key. That looks good. That looks good to me. And the ESD 2016, I mean, you know, the same drill. You can just create outlines, align it even more perfectly, but that's fine. Do you think I should add one more star to really make it like five star? Let me just size this down. I think the stars are a little bit too big. I don't want them to take away from the learn share. So let me come over here, make the height like 35 pixels. When I do that, this entire group is going to be, have a height of like 35 pixels, right? 
And if I do the same for this lone star here, the same thing is going to apply 35 pixels, right? That's looking a bit better. Maybe the shield is too tall. Maybe it's too tall. So I'm just going to pick an edge randomly. Just drag it up. Yeah, I think that that was the issue. Let me just align. But first, let me select all of these and group them like I usually do. Control and G to group the stars, the ESD, the 2016. Let's align it to the center of my document. Align the shield because it's off because I sized it down, right? Then let me select, oh wait, let me double click the gray, the lighter gray shield. Do I want to make it dark gray? I don't know. But I want to increase the stroke a little bit. So let's make that stroke like four, right? That's looking a lot better. Forgive me for not saving my file while I was designing. Forgive me. Forgive me, right? Just go to file and then save and you can call your logo whatever it is you want. So let's say LSPV logo design in Illustrator. Let's call it something random like that, right? Let's just say Illustrator 1. Save it, right? Get the dialog box asking about compatibility. Click OK. The next thing you want to do is save a copy of this, like a PNG, a transparent background copy that you can use for, you know, on printing, etc., on your Facebook page, whatever it is, on your website, right? And remember, all that we did here today is just bare minimum stuff. Obviously, you can change colors. Like if you wanted to hit these stars, right? Let me ungroup all of this, right? Click and just ungroup. If you wanted to just hit the stars and change the color, you can like just go crazy. I'm just showing you what you're able to do here inside of Adobe Illustrator, right? Now to save all of this, that actually looks pretty cool. If I were to go ahead and just like choose some vintage colors right here, like if I were to change this gray to like, I don't know, maybe a brown, right? That's the, you can do anything you want to do. I'm just showing you the possibilities, right? I'm just showing you the possibilities. If I want to save this, as a transparent background PNG without this white background. This white background is just a placeholder. All I have to do is hit Control Alt E, Command Option E. If you're on Mac, select PNG here from your file type list, and then you can just go ahead and click Export Artboard, and that will save everything that's on this area here. That's your artboard, right? If you want to just like fill the screen, like just go ahead and do that, and then save your logo so if you liked all that we did here today go ahead and let me know in the comments down below and remember you can download this logo for free and make it your own thank you thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one